the Casting Class, the engineer's podcast for all things metal casting. Casting Class is brought to you by Baseball Products, the manufacturing experts who've been casting, machining, and polishing custom aluminum components for over 75 years. Today we have engineering manager Monty Fullerton here to talk about three unique features you can design into a permanent mold casting. So first, welcome Monty. Tell us a little bit about your engineering experience. How long have you been in the metal casting industry? Actually, I started out in the this industry as a pattern maker. I've been in, in the industry now for 49 years. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you learn a lot in 49 years. <laughs> so you learn a little bit about just about every type of process mm-hmm. over that period of time. Worked with sand, worked with permanent mold, also plaster molds. Uh, few different processes. So now your main role is you look at a lot of designs from engineers that come to us and they Correct. say here's our design and we want to manufacture um, this. The customer sends models, I will have to make it castable. So there's minus the draft, minus radiuses, fillets, small things like that. But then once you get to make it castable, you build your tooling, whether it be sand casting or permanent mold. Yeah. (laughs) So you're working with castings every day, but I'd say a lot, I'd go as far to say most of the people that are in those industries, they're not designing castings every day. They don't, they don't see it in their industry. They may see a casting, but they don't know how it's made. Mm -hmm. So if you're not familiar with that casting process, then you might not realize all of the design features that you can add in. So the inserts, so they might not be aware that they can add in those cool features. Can you talk a little bit about what these inserts are and kind of how they fit into the casting process? So what what are all of the things you can insert? Inserts that could be replaceable inserts for small cores that are permanently in there, but you may want to make inserts to replace because of wear. Okay. Or you can go with a loose one, which is a core, but they call them inserts as well. And then there's a pull core that's used as coring out the inside of the casting. So you got these three different types pretty much then. Right. So those first inserts that you mentioned, those were permanent inserts. These are often uh, steel components. That has to be placed in before you pour, and that gets encased in the mold. Yep. So before every pour, you place the steel insert in the mold, then you pour the aluminum, it fills the mold, hardens around the insert, and now that piece just becomes part of the casting. So you can cast in, we've done steel tubing, we have an, uh, a steel thread. Uh, uh, channeling. You can, you can use them for just about anything that's internal to the casting. A very helpful, very easy to understand process. There's not much else to really say about that first insert option. I'd say that's about it for inserts. So let's talk about sand cores. Semi permanent mold. That's right. the main name for it. And that's perfect name for it because of the sand core. Yeah, you're kind of mm-hmm. combining both processes exactly. there. So you can make any sort of hollow cavity in the casting. You just have to add core prints to create over the sand core Mm -hmm. outside of the casting. Yeah, you can't make a sphere with a hollow center. It has to be held there. You've got to have a core print to hold it in place. And when it comes to the logistics of holding that sand core in place, is there anything the design engineer should know? It usually comes out of a hole. Or, or the end of a casting, and your core print is, if it's a round part, you want it to be square so it doesn't rotate on you. And when you close over the top half or coat, that holds it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they don't even have to think about designing in terms of making it no. manufacturable. It's just, Normally I they, want this hollow cavity. Yeah, that's all they really know about is it's hollow in there. Mm-hmm. They don't know how it's going to get there. <laughs> well, that's, that's your job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the engineer doesn't have to worry about how it's held. They just have to make sure that it has an entrance and an exit point. Yep. When you add in a sand core, you have an extra step of getting the sand core out. 
So there's, you can do heat treat and it will bake it out yes. or you can but shake you, it out. You normally shake it out first. Okay. Before it goes to heat treat. Heat treat doesn't like to have all that sand in the water. Mm -hmm. So it'll go to shake out first, which it's just a vibrating machine that shakes the shakes it until all the sand is basically pulverized and falls out. Shake it really fast. And really and fast <laughs> and hard. And that normally clamps onto your gating. Okay. So it shakes it, gets rid of the sand, and then we bring it back and we cut the gating off, and then we send it out to heat treat. Do you have to do both the shaking and heat treat, or can you do just Only the... Only until the customer specifies uh, heat treat. Okay. It could be a 2.5 or it could be a 2.6 heat treat. But they could just do shake and not do Correct. heat treat. It has to have a way to shake it out. Shake it out. Yep. And that's usually through the core printed ends mm -hmm. of the core that hold it in place. Usually their openings are big enough to where they'll shake it out. If the openings aren't big enough, then you can try shake out or you can go to heat treat or you can try to get it out through uh, washing it like a, a liquid to get the sand to break down. Okay. So in all of your experience, how have you seen sand cores used? What are some reasons engineers might want to design one in? A lot of them is like I say, to make it hollow, either a certain metal wall thickness, or they could use it for passages like you talked about, or just creating a cavity. Mm -hmm. If you can't, if it has undercuts inside of the casting, you have to use a core to get those undercuts. Otherwise, it won't come out. You cannot do it if it's got undercuts. Are there any other limitations when it comes to designing a part with a sand core? Does it have a difference on tolerances or oh, yeah. surface you finish? Oh, still got to hold tolerances with the sand core, just mm -hmm. as well as just making a casting without a core. It's the same tolerances. Normally, cores permanent are pretty, mold. Your cores yeah. are pretty close. <laughs> yeah, permanent mold has tight tolerances to be yeah. able to add in the sand and still and hold that's that. And that's all determined really by the customer, too, how much what the tolerances mm -hmm. are. So then the other type of core is you have your pool cores. Yeah. So I'm a little more unfamiliar with that. A so pool you... core is usually on a die cast or, or a permanent mold, and it's hooked up to hydraulics. To push and pull it in and out. So this would be a pull core would be part of the mold then, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It'd be hooked up by brackets and also hydraulics. Every type of core or insert though that would be part of your tooling mold. cost and mold yes. technically. If it's a sand core, you'll have to build an extra set of tools for core box. Oh yeah, just to make the core. So that's an extra cost. So why would you use a pool core instead of a sand core? Because there is no undercuts, anything like that inside of the mold, or inside the casting, I mean. Okay. And it'll go in, you make a casting, and it'll pull, it'll draw out, no problem. So does that have extra draft on it to make sure that it can yes, pull out? Yes, And you try to hold minimal draft on everything you do. Mm -hmm. And our standard is three degrees. And that can be determined by the customer as well. If there's no machining, they want plenty of draft, you can add it. So to recap, we have three types of cores or inserts. Steel, pull cores, you got sand cores, and those can be used in a variety of different processes. Definitely the most versatile it is. option. The sand is, yes. Die cast, not so, not so good. They don't use sand cores at all. Why is that? I would guess it's because of the automation involved in, in die casting. They don't want to take that time to yeah. open up the mold. And it's, it's, they would just soon draft it and make a pull with a, a steel, mm -hmm. steel core. And if there's any little undercuts, they will work with the customer usually and work them out. Um, I would say investment casting it would be part of your wax mm -hmm. and it just melts away anyway. 
So it's all kind of special to permanent mold, really. Yeah. Yeah. And you use a combination, of course, too, to get different conditions. That's a good point. You can use all of them in one Correct. part. Thanks for listening to Casting Class, the engineer's podcast for all things metal casting. For more episodes, videos, and guides, check out BatesvilleProducts.com. See you next month.